Here we go now, friends. The oh, singing gay butt of Joseph Benedict Arnold Stephen Nolan the Third Junior and uh, uh, Junior Junior Third. No, uh, uh, on the radio. Here we go. A one and a two and a. Must be the snowman with the jolly happy soul, with a corn cut pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal. Down through the village. That's all I remember. With a suitcase in his hand. Oh, with a suitcase in his hand. Uh, running here, here and there, there. Running here and there and everywhere. All around the square. You really let's catch get me on the program. you can, right? <laughs> I can do it. There you go. <laughs> well said, Howard. Well said. Another so, astute observation. Well, three dozen cookies. On their way. Pounds of cookies. chocolate chip cookies on their way to you, even as we speak. And any, of course, that Bob would like. This is Marvin Zuckerman of Marvin and Sons Jewelry, Watches, and Gifts in Cedarhurst, Long Island. With the holiday season now upon us, why not visit my store, Marvin and Sons, and select a beautifully designed watch from our large collection of world-famous Seiko watches. It's twice the gift when you give a Seiko quartz watch. A gift of beautiful jewelry and a gift of incredibly accurate time. A slim shape with elegant textures. A superb watch that never needs winding on your wrist or in your jewel box. Give the world's best-selling quality quartz watch, Seiko. No wonder people trust Seiko more than any other watch. Seiko watches available at Marvin & Sons, your authorized dealer. Located on Spruce Street in Cedarhurst. Open daily, 10 to 5.30, Wednesdays till 9 p.m., Sunday, 12 noon to 5 p.m., Call for directions, 516-569-2200. 516-569-2200. All right, it is 25 minutes after 8 o'clock, 825 at WABC Talk Radio. 17, is it still 17 degrees? 17 degrees. I'm sick. 17 degrees. I almost said 18. 17 degrees, that's down a degree from when we got here about 5 o'clock this morning. Yeah. So there you have it. Button up your overcoat. It's a strong possibility that your kids, uh, much more than you ever could at their age, uh, be able to brag, look, ma, no cavities. Now look, no bra But according to an article in the Science Times section of today's New York Times, your grandchildren, my grandchildren, Harley's grandchildren, are likely to ask, what, ma, are cavities? New advances, says the Times, make tooth decay. That horrible villain of yesteryear's Crest commercials, a long-forgotten bad dream by the turn of the century. And you'll find all the pleasant details in your copy of today's New York Times. Or on the other side of the coin, you'll find a report by Jane Brody on devastating but hidden form of child abuse, emotional deprivation. And where you'll find out from John Noble Wilford that's uh, what scholars are thinking, uh, that Homer was thinking uh, when he described the sea as being wine dark. Does that mean that the ancient Greeks drank blue wine? Does that mean the ancient Greeks sailed a Red Sea? Does that mean that the ancient Greeks were a bunch of alkies? Uh, I don't know. We'll find all about it when we read the article in the Times. Possibilities are fascinating for sure. And if they give the recipe, I'll be the first one to jump on a grape. So this morning's New York Times is yours for the picking. Just grab a copy of the latest newsstand, roll it up in a ball, bash yourself over the head, and say, darn, I forgot to call about home delivery. Then go to the office and do it. 1-800-631-2500 is the number to call. 1-800-631-2500. Home delivery out! This has become an epidemic. I should certainly hope so. The New York Times. Thank you very much there, Coach. It's uh, 27 minutes after 8 o'clock. Well, wasn't Joe Nolan terrific? Yes, he was. Well, wasn't that really amazing? I don't want fine voice this incredible. morning. Incredible. I'd almost be willing to hear that again. A one and a two oh. and a... Plus be the snowman with a jolly happy soul With a corn cut pipe and a button nose And two eyes made out of coal Down <laughs> through the village That's all I remember. With a suitcase in his hand. Oh, with a suitcase in his hand. Uh, running here and there, there, running here and there, and everywhere. All around the square. You can rally catch get me on the if you can, right? <laughs> I can do it. There you go. <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, instant replay here. I like him. I feel sorry for him. <laughs> yes, exactly right, Howard. By golly, I can't say that I blame you. Well, here it is, 27 and a half minutes after 8 o'clock. Hey, listen, we got, I got an invitation. Oh, yeah? An invitation to speak, to be an, a mangler of ceremonies. Uh-oh. Uh, they don't dear, know what they're asking for. Yeah. <laughs> and I imagine that. It says, uh, Dear Brian, my purpose in writing you to you is to ask if you would MC the TOYC banquet, 10 Outstanding Young Citizens Banquet, to be held Saturday, February the 4th, 1983, at the Ramada Inn in East Brunswick, New Jersey, held by the New Jersey JCs, and there would be about 500 people there. 
East J.C. chapter in Nueva Jersey is asked to select a candidate from their area whom they feel has made an outstanding contribution to their community during the year. We feel that this evening is not only to award the winners, but to encourage community participation by all young people. Robert Phelan, the Mount Olive J.C.'s in Stanhope, New Jersey. That is great. Isn't that terrific? Are you going to do it? Hell yes. Of course. Not just yes, but hell yes. I'll, I'll call the guy and that uh, sounds great. tell him I accept. Sounds like a marvelous organization and yeah. a perfectly worthwhile operation. Yep. Why not? Not only that, I need to get out. It's <laughs> 20, <laughs> and, uh, eight and a half minutes after 8 o'clock. After 8 o'clock and season's greetings indeed. By the way, South Carolina became an ununited state on this day in 1860, the first state to secede from the Union. South Carolinians told President Lincoln to stop sticking his warts into their business. And before they'd sell the U.S. any more tobacco or cotton, they'd smoke it all themselves. And you know how difficult it is to smoke cotton. The, uh, the other guy, Harvey Firestone, was born on this day in 1868. Harvey learned early in life that money didn't grow on trees, but rubber did. So he leased a million-acre rubber farm in Liberia and spent the rest of his life trying to develop a tree that grew steel-belted radials. He never really worked it out. <laughs> He did make uh, did make himself a wonderful time. All right, enough of this inner office chit chat. It's almost time to get down to business here. The um, we've got uh, we've got Harley Harley Carnes, chili chili cook extraordinaire, and the lovely Kathy Muldoon, shivering in uh, the light of the current temperature reading of seventeen degrees. So if you notice a few teeth chattering in the background while Harvey mm-hmm. Harley's doing the news, you'll know uh, you'll know what the problem what uh, the problem is. I'm not a chili cook, but I am chili. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so here she is, um, about a. About 103 pounds of goose, goose pimple, <laughs> Kylie Maloney, and the lovely Harley Carnes. We're going to have some sunshine today and a high only about 23 degrees. Tomorrow, possible light snow with a high less than 30. And the outlook for Thursday a little bit warmer with uh, whatever precipitation there is changing to rain. It's sunny right now and 17 degrees. We'll have to hope it changes to rain. The weather service says if the temperature does not go up, all that precipitation just might be snow. So watch out. This is how it goes south. Reporting. The deadliest martial art isn't from the Orient. It's from right here in New York. And it's more nerve-shattering than Kung Fu, Tai Chi, and all the others thrown together. It's called... Driving Yourself to the Airport. It takes in the company. Or call the Port Authority's toll-free information service. 800-A-I-R-R-I-D-E. 800-A-R-I-D-E. And take the easy way out. do 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 bum 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 I want to thank everyone for the great Christmas. We got some great Christmas cards. Yep. Harley's been decorating the studio with him, and he's done a marvelous job. Yes. It's really terrific. Yeah, it looks good. Thank, thank <laughs> Kathy. Uh, Debbie, uh, Debbie enjoys them. And uh, then, uh, then Kathy Novak comes in and blows them all down. I don't know why that is. Anyway, it's a marvelous uh, it's a marvelous time. Ho, ho, ho. We'll, uh, we'll do some more singing for, uh, for cookies. Singing for cookies. You have, you have another one? Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. tomorrow. I'll do some tomorrow. I'm, uh, my lips are running. Plus, I've... I, except for Oh Susanna, I've done my entire Christmas repertoire. No, oh, we're gonna have to hear the same songs again tomorrow. Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, there's uh, I hope you're gonna practice bells. tonight. Jingle. <laughs> I don't have to practice. Yeah, I know. Silent, listen, I've got, it on, I mean, I got it on tape. I got it on tape. Silent Night. Yeah. You heard me play Silent Night. That was good this morning. Yeah, that one was even good. the hard part. That was Paula. That's hard. Like That's the hard part up there. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. Paula did a marvelous yes, job, yeah. and, and, and Joe Nolan singing uh, whatever that was. Yeah, Frosty the Snowman. Yeah, uh, I've got another one. Lines of it. I've got another one. I've been working on that. A couple of people who were guests here on this show about a year ago uh, wrote and penned and everything. It was one of the great Christmas classics. Oh yeah. Yeah, they were here, and uh, in fact, I think as I recall correctly, we actually all got together and sang it. I don't know that this is the uh, the recording that we all we all sung together. But this is uh, this is the one they actually did a great Christmas classic. You probably remember this one. It's one of the great ones of our time. Got oh. run over by a reindeer. 
<laughs> Walking home from our house Christmas Eve. Boy, did we have some fun with this. You can say there's no such thing as Santa. But as for me and Grandpa, we believe. Oh, uh, where are they now? Sheep and incriminating claws marks on her back. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. I think we've, uh... Walking home from our house Christmas Eve. Oh, you said that was a one-minute version. You can say there's no such thing as Santa. But as for me and Grandpa, we believe. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Grandma coming up by <laughs> Well, I guess we got some calls on that. Anyway, it was a marvelous, it was a marvelous time. Marvelous time. That was one year ago, right about now, with uh, with those folks. Mm-hmm. Patty and... Uh, can't remember the, uh, the guy's name. Patty and Devo. Right, that's right. <laughs> How do I ever forget that? Well, there you have it. I um, I can't tell you. My, oh, this is um, this is a really marvelous occasion. I uh, I want to I want to bring this out because you know when uh, when you listen to WABC Talk Radio seventy seven, you uh, you may fail to remember that this is a fifty thousand watt clear channel mother, and we are heard at varying times uh, throughout the entire known universe. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, between midnight and six o'clock in the morning, generally speaking. We, uh, we can be picked up in about 38 states. That's a lot. Exactly right. So I know right now there are probably some people up in Lewiston, Maine, um, that are probably listening to this show right now. And they have cause de celeb, because uh, it was on this day in 1928, the post office used dog sleds for the first time to deliver the mail. For the first time. First time. The, the, very, first, first. the very first time. 1928, Lewiston, Maine. Hmm. Home of Bates College. Big deal. They, uh, of course, that practice started a trend. You probably know the uh, and the postal service has been going to the dogs ever since. Oh. Eight forty-five. <laughs> Big hand on the nine, little hand on the eight, at WABC Talk Radio, and uh, Bill on one. That's good, Bill. Uh, one's more than enough. Hi. Hi. What's your name? This is Bill. The oh. Guy. Oh, hi, Bill. Yeah. Listen. Uh, first of all, after listening to you and Nolan, I know what killed the Ted Mack Amateur Hour. Yeah, you're darn right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, I'm gonna, I was telling Kathy, uh, I'm practicing for all the Irish there, I'm practicing a song for your fr- party Friday morning called Christmas in Killarney. Christmas in Killarney, oh, that's good. Right, I know all the, i got to practice it, though. Oh, well, good. Well, listen, just, just, just do one verse. We're going to try and get as many Christmas songs uh, sung as possible. Do you know, uh, are you, you're obviously Irish. Yes, no. Do you know... Is there anything else? <laughs> uh, not that I know of. Uh, yeah, well, there's two, they always say there's two kinds of people in the world. Right. The Irish people and those who want to be. That's it. Yeah. They, um, I'm one of the latter. Well, well, listen, the, you tell Debbie Accabelli that uh, the, the Auburn hair comes from the Irish. Yeah, well, she knows that. Okay. Well, she knows that indeed. Uh, uh, listen, and, I want to ask you, well, is, she, is she related to Harper Marx? I never hear her voice. Oh, yeah. Well, every once in a while, you see what happens. <laughs> That's a good thought. See, what happens is that she and, and Debbie, uh, she and Kathy, rather, are in the are in another room, the control room, yeah, yeah, right in front of me. And they are separated by two panes of insulated glass, four German shepherds, two Darwin pincers, uh, a machine gunner, and a partridge in a pear tree. Right. Well, you tell them that I said, tell Kathy Maloney and her that I said to have a... Erin Gorbrock Christmas. Indeed, All indeed. Right. I don't think they're wearing one this morning, but thank you very much. And I'll uh, be sure to mention it to them next time I see you. 846, talk to you on Friday morning, Bob. 846, 14 minutes to 9 o'clock. Well, Friday is shaping up into a really Friday, we're going to have a hell of a show. Morning. We're going to have a yeah. morning show Christmas party here, and I expect each and every one of you to be here and in fine spirit. Yeah. We'll sing, we'll dance, we'll uh, play the harmonica. Okay, we won't play the harmonica. Sure you will. We'll do something. Yay! The idea that you're going to be... Do you know what I could do Friday morning? Harmonic? What? I could bring in my saxophone. Uh, okay. Do I detect a distinct lack of enthusiasm only, on the other side of the table? No. Only Are you prejudging something you have not yet heard? I understand. Would you be so bold as to condescend to be but able to make disparaging remarks about my ability on the saxophone? play saxophone pretty well. Yeah, I do. That's what I've heard. I do that. I do. I'll and that's why I was hesitating, because I was going to make a disparaging comment about your saxophone playing. Maynard Ferguson liked it. Yeah, and Count Basie, Basie liked it. Yeah. And a cast of thousands. Yes. Well. Well, obviously it is. Bring it, sure. Wonderful idea. 
And uh, Debbie will bring her tuba. That'll be a lot of fun. Yep. Tuba toothpaste. And I'll and bring the belly over. drums. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have a regular little get down, get down. Let's get down. Let's get out. It's 847 here. Things are uh, moving right along. Uh, a couple of commercial massages. Then we'll uh, drag Nolan back, kicking and screaming, for a final look at shadow traffic. Night is gonna be great. Make the night sparkle. 